Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for Managing Contracts in QAD. I'm Denise, and back with me to present live again for this year's webinar series finale, I can't believe it, is Don Lindsay, 32Soft's QAD and MRP guru. As I hand off to Don now, here are some highlights among the vast experience Don brings to his every presentation. Okay, I got uh, the show me, and we're we're good to go. Yeah, got it. Looks good. Thanks. Son. Okay, sounds great. Well, good morning, afternoon, day. So over the last couple of months, we've covered a lot of subjects, including uh, product change control, security access, SAF codes, pricing, all of which are on the 32Soft website. Uh, just a word before we start. Uh, QAD has, along with other uh, actions, changed the name of services support to field service management. So the acronym FSM and SSM are pretty much interchangeable. QAD offers uh, lots of features and modules devoted to the art of establishing business relationships with your supplier and customers. One of the strongest features of QED is the field service management, particularly when it comes to handling post-purchase operations. I'd like to go through some of the intricacies of contracts and warranties in this webinar and discuss a few of the field service management tools that can affect them. Additionally, at the end, I'd like to present a couple of new 32 soft data loaders that can assist businesses in navigating the complexities of contracts and warranties. So here are just a couple of the things we'd like to cover today. Just an overview of service management, talk a little bit about install base, end users, and then talk specifically about warranties contracts and the 32 soft contract loaders. As always, there are many terms and definitions that are associated with a subject like contracts. Remember, if you don't know the meaning of a phrase or term I use, please look it up on Google. Now, chat GPT. I've also found Claude 2 useful, OSO. There's just a whole bunch of great artificial intelligence tools out there. As with past webinars, we've created a URL page on the 32Soft website that can help you navigate this subject. Remember, service and support management is one of the more complex functions in QED. I've heard it said that FSM has as much code as the rest of QED combined. The US Department of Commerce figures it suggests that customers and businesses worldwide spend more than $1.5 trillion a year on spare parts maintenance and repair services. Contracts provide high margin aftermarket. It's the wave of the future with IoT and digital technologies, customers are looking for a competitive edge. <clears throat> Companies that invest in superior aftermarket services are better serviced and positioned to thrive by pursuing ticketing systems, knowledge base, agent, collaboration, customer history, and what we'll talk about today, service level agreement management, and security and access control. So where can, how can QED help? QED's field services encompass most of the aspects of the service business, from a contact center with call management to a full service customer facing suite. It can manage complex and varying customer relationships, can maintain visibility and manage customer interactions, optimizes the use of engineers in service inventories. FSM enables business decisions from a solid base of information. For QAD customers, the fact that QAD's FSM is highly integrated is a key differentiator. The field service, is a robust, complex, but flexible application intended for all activities uh, revolving around a product after it has been sold to the customer to control communications, 
repair and dispose disposal of product. The areas include install base, warranties and contracts, call activity recording, material orders, service accounting, return material authorizations, billing cycles. Very flexible tool. As we said, FSM is fully integrated into QAD. One of the things that stands out with regards to the field service management module of QAD is it's totally integrated. There's no need for APIs or integration. FSM covers from the point the product is sold through its warranty into a service contract, then a renewal process, and eventually into disposal of the product. We'll talk primarily about the service contract today and mention warranties. So what is a control file? As with all things, QED file, control files allow super users and admins, developers to customize changes in the application settings without modifying core code base, providing flexibility to tailor QED's configurations. There are about 109 odd control files in QAD. If you look at service and support specifically, you'll find about a dozen control files that control the FSM functionality specifically. These control files are extensive. You should study each one and make sure you understand the options and the ramifications of your choices regarding how the system is going to function. The field service management <coughs> control file starts with 11.24. Here we find such uses as whether the install base must exist in the item master file. Are you going to load available structures if you use configured products? You want to pay specific attention to how you set up and associate product lines to help you define warranty and contract administrations from a financial point of view. And ultimately, the key question is, do you want to ship to the install base to track in FSM? As mentioned, there are over 109 control files in QAD. Word of caution, several other control files in QAD affect service and support, such as picking logic in 3.24, or in 7.1.24, sales order control file, you'll find such options as whether you wish to edit the install base defaults in a sales order. This is not a webinar on field service administration functionality, but warranties and contracts require close consideration with regards to such areas as security, user maintenance, and with regards to roles and permissions. In the newer versions of QED, most of the primary control files have now a financial aspects of those modules separated into new unique control files in 36.9. Pay special attention to the 36.9.10 SSM accounting control file. As we're talking about contracts primarily, let's look at some of the elements of QAD that act as a foundation for warranty contact process. First is the site setup, 1.1.13. This is where we store inventory and where we run MRP. We also cost items. And this has a significant effect on how you set up contracts and how they're structured. Location maintenance is used to specify areas within a particular site where inventory is stored and how it can be used. You can create locations for issue from, remove material, customer supplied locations, it's your choice. There's just such flexibility. Each location have its own inventory status as to whether it's netable, available, or a possible of over issue. Blank locations are allowed, but not ever really recommended. Since in 99 cases out of 100, you're going to be creating contracts and warranties for items that you sell, you must ensure that all 83 field elements of 1.4.1, 1.4.7, 16 are up to date and accurate. Structure your item master 
is going to determine which items are going to be available for contract and warranty and how they're administered. We won't go over all the fields required for a setup of items, but I want to mention specifically 11.3.7 service item maintenance, or depending on how you have your security structured, could be the last frame of 1.4.1. This menu determines several of the basic parameters of items that are going to be maintained in your service support module, including what codes default, what system types, in addition to what kind of coverage is available. There are also codes for model numbers and various mean time re between repair and failure values. We've discussed product lines several times in the past as they determine which general ledger accounts are going to be used for various operations and financial activities. Remember, we need to make the accountants happy. Service accounts are used for general ledger transactions in call activity recording and contracts for accrued and deferred and for material expense through material orders. We've talked about inventory many times. ERP lives on the accuracy of our inventory. The same holds true for contracts. Contracts and warranties are complex. Even after the product leaves our premises, our quantity on hand and how we track, trace, and control inventory at our customer's location is critical to the success of administering warranties and contracts. Remember, the perpetual record is the continuously updated quantity on hand and how it got to be in that balance all day, every day. Remember, our primary target for contracts are your customers. We define customers in 36.1.4.3.1, business relationship create, 27.20.1.1, customer create, and 2.1.1, customer data maintenance. There are 169 menus in QED with customer in the title. There are 84 fields in 2.1.1, 111 fields in 2720.1, and 55 fields in 36.1.4.3. Every value is expected to be accurate and complete. Contracts start with the record of the install base, who owns the item in field service. If you want to implement contracts on the install base, you must make a number of business decisions as do you want the item added to the install base? Do you want things that are manufactured or just purchased? Do you support items in the install base with warranties? Are different install base requirements for items that you cover on service contracts? Do you need to track parents? The ultimate question is you want to make money. The install base can be updated from various activities in the service and support module. You can manually maintain records, you can attach service contracts and maintenance, you can track repairs and service history, you can uh, facilitate warrant submissions and renewal transactions, and you can bill for after sale usage based services. Lots of activities. Install base data in 1131 install base maintenance can be created automatically from an inventory post or entered manually. The warranty code and the warranty expiration are then carried in the install base record. The last frame of 1131 install base maintenance allows one to denote a ownership code or a location code. These can be references set up in generalized codes. There's a status code that can be used and most importantly, there is a new serial uh, field. This field can change the serial number for an item already in the install base. I have found that extremely uh, beneficial. The install base record also can be updated from sales orders. When inventory post updates install base, the system puts messages in your local directory about the ISCB records. This file is called the ISBPST.PRN file. 
It contains information regarding occurrences of deletes of RMAs in sales orders, ISB updates, ISB uh, messages that are uh, created, a very uh, handy uh, record to uh, refer to. If your product has multiple levels of components, which are covered by contracts or warranties, the use of 11.3.5 install-based configuration can be uh, used to relate component parents as they are to parents in the install base. This can be accomplished either manually with 11.3.1 or automatically through your inventory print and post or even in call activity recording. FSM allows you to track the install base and end users. The customer is the parent record for the end users belonging to a customer. End users are used in field service module to identify uh, addresses and data. It's used to link the end user to customers and then install base items are linked to those end users. The customer code can be used as an end user uh, number. However, I would uh, recommend caution with doing that. Unique numbers are much more effective. The end user information helps to find individual items in the install base. You can do this directly, indirectly through the sales order, or from other service functions like call maintenance, call quote maintenance, RMA maintenance, and contract maintenance, maintaining contacts, engineering data, skill sets, travel data, escalation data, contact, and format data. Codes in FSM are the basis of the process. We set up codes for work codes, inventory sort codes, service categories, charge codes, product lines. These codes are used to create service types. There are basically two types of services, warranties and contracts. Warranties are assigned to items. Contracts are assigned to individual sales. When a call is open, the correct service type is determined and the activity is then recorded against the call. Charge codes determine whether service is invoiced to the customer, billing or fixed charges, or provides free of charge or warranty, or even tracked internally to special project codes. Charge codes play an important role. They determine service limits, how to record service, how to process service inventory, and importantly, the product and accounts for after sales activities. Generalized codes are a great way to standardize the use of everything in QED. And generalized codes and generalized code groups allow for creating very flexible supplementary classifications to augment standard transaction and analytics. Before we get directly into context, we need to take a step back and look at the functionality of warranties, as warranties are effective directly after the shipment of a product in some defined period. There are five basic steps to establishing a warranty code. First of all, you have to set the 1124 to ship to the install base, yes. Then in 11315, you define your warranty codes, and those can be 30-day uh, warranties, 60-day warranties, two-year warranties, however many you uh, might want. And then use the 1137 service item maintenance to attach an item to a type of warranty. You can then use 7.3.4 inventory post and print to create install based records automatically by posting the invoice on the sales order. In FSM, warranty types are defined and assigned inappropriate uh, 1137. If you're using the interface between the sales order, they can be updated automatically, or you can enter these on an individual basis. The 11315 warranty type maintenance, you want to create a warranty code for every item and major assembly or component that the system can carry a warranty quote for. You need to decide how many warranty codes are necessary. You don't want to make more than necessary 
only those that you're going to use. The warranty on uh, needs at least one blank end user type before you can create one for a particular type of end user. This warranty is what is referred to as the base warranty. When warranty coverage information is associated with an install base, it is available to other service functions. The 11315 warranty type, <clears throat> in each time you sell and designate an install base service item, you assign a warranty to it. That involves the duration of that. Warranties are done in days and contracts are measured in months. Important differentiation for the billing process. There's a warranty end date. When does that end? It usually starts on the day that you ship it. There's a contract end date and defaults can be calculated for that uh, contact duration. So <clears throat> let's look at contracts. Since most of our discussions today are gonna revolve around contracts, it's helpful to understand the history of contracts. It started off in ancient civilizations like Mesopotamia, Egypt, where these were often oral agreements and sometimes written on clay and pyrus. Middle age saw the development of personal relationships and social status as a basis of contract. And then in the Renaissance and early modern age, Hugo Grotus and John Locke contributed to the development of contract theory. And then in the Industrial Revolution, we saw the rise of commerce and industrial contracts. And now in the 20th century, it's all revolving around the internet and di uh, digital technologies. <clears throat> so what are the elements of a contract? Well, a contract is a legally binding agreement between two or more parties that creates obligations enforceable by law starts with an offer, what we call a quote. Then there's a, an acceptance entering the quote as contract. There are considerations. Uh, those can be defined by limits, which we'll talk about. There's an intention to create a legal uh, relationship. If you print and uh, exchange that, there's legality of purses, capacity, and a certainty or possibility of performance along with mutual assent. Contracts be uh, categorized in various types based on their nature, enforceability, purpose. They can range from express contracts to bilateral to voidable executory contracts. As mentioned, it's important to consult a legal professional for specific uh, jurisdictional laws for detail and accurate information regarding contracts. I've dealt with enough lawyers. You want to make sure you get a good one. Chewity can model all of these types of contracts. To use contracts, we follow the following steps. Set up the basic information in 11.524, the con contract control. Then you can define additional charges, which we'll talk about. Create a contract quote using a contract type that you define. Many or organizations go through a review process and use this 11511 contract quote maintenance to create quotes to ensure the accuracy of the contract maintenance in 11.5.13.1. Depending on your billing process, you release contracts for invoicing in 11.5.13.18.13. And then you could go through a renewal contract and finally through the archive and delete process. There are 35 menus in QED with contract in the title. It is important <clears throat> to understand the types of or the collection of contracts that can be viewed in input. The first can be considered a collection of items each with one or more end users associated or a collection of end users with items requiring coverage. The way that you decide this can affect 
how the frame sequences in the contract maintenance flow, how data elements de de default from one contract level to another, how the contract and billing information displays on invoices, how taxes are defaulted, and how preventive maintenance schedules are created. This requires much thought and can be uh, somewhat confusing. The service types tie together cover information, customer and end user records, and items to be supported. It consists of duration, response time, price, service coverage hours, and limits. And again, there are two types, either a warranty defined in 11515 or contract types defined in 11510. Service types apply to call maintenance, RMA maintenance, call quote maintenance, call activity recording, and contract maintenance. Service type attributes, as we mentioned, include the product line, which defines the general ledger accounts, the duration, how long that coverage is going to uh, cover, how uh, quick you need to respond in terms of hours or days or weeks. It recalls price lists we covered at uh, the Midwest user, the West Coast user group just a couple of weeks ago, and whether you want to ship before return and a priority code. These attributes can apply to both contracts and warranties. <coughs> the service coverage does a lot of good things for both customer and the company, and that can get set automatic calculations for service charges. Coverage can be set in two different defined levels, either at a high level grouping or at a detail level of the item itself. Service coverage can support a fixed price billing. Limits can be defined in two ways, either for a particular service or a combination of services. The 11.510 contract type maintenance coverage uh, frame requires duration, the response time, and the unit of time, whether there's a restocking charge, and you can define the hours of coverage by day. Service types affect almost everything in field service. Field service management module requires a default service type, one for calls, one for calls must be a contract call or contract type, and one for RMAs. Service contract is used to manage billing, replacement, support of items, and issues arise in call and call quote maintenance, call activity recording, preventive maintenance, and RMA processing. A few key settings in the contract control file, which include, does it have to be in the install base? How are you gonna renew limits from existing contracts based on the service type? And how to handle end users or additional contract charges. Various other settings of contract uh, influence how Contracts are created, built, and managed. The benefits of limits in contracts, which is ubiquitous, all contracts have limits. There are a number of exceptions that delineate the enforceable voluntary agreements between the capable parties for a particular contract. Contracts address managing expectations, containing uh, liabilities, controlling costs, providing flexibility, allowing uh, control over quality. It facilitates budgeting. You need to have a good legal review of the setup of the limits in the contract. In QAD, limits can be set by way of service type in contract line example here by SC-1. One of the useful features of limits and levels of coverage in the FSM is that limits information can be made an actual part of the contract. When you create a contract, you're prompted to comp copy the prompts 
of the limits from the service type? If you re respond yes, the limits are actually made part of that contract. You can choose to have different coverage for individual lines as opposed to the contract. And you can set those in many different ways, copying from a header to a line, copying from the contract header itself, associating different types with lines as opposed to the header, lots of flexibility. Service type basically defines rules for governing business relationships. As we mentioned, warranties are attached to items, contracts. Some of the contract attributions can be used directly, but others could provide defaults that can be modified for individual contracts. As the slide illustrates, warranty type maintenance is almost identical to contract type maintenance, except for a few minor differences. Warranties can be defined per end user type. Warranty duration is measured in days, well, Contracts are measured in months. Remember, this is an important distinction regarding billing. Contract types allow for default contract price lists, which are not included in warranty types, and limits cannot be defined for warranties. 11.5.13.1, contract maintenance. You, after you create the contract number, either random, significant, assigned, however you want to do that. Then you're pre uh, presented with the item end user choice, either checked or unchecked. And we said, if it's no, the contract is designed to provide coverage for one or more end users associated with the items. If it's yes, the contract is designed to coverage for one or more items with associated end users. Remember, this indicates the relationship between items and end users and defines a contract screen flow. Next choice is who, how are you going to bill? There's a billing cycle, price list, start date, the sources, which can be from either your install base record, a sales order, or a quote. This is a very complex uh, menu, and I'll show you. Uh, how 32Soft has de designed a uh, two different loaders to address that complexity. The line default defines the item that is to be supported, its serialization scheme, its billing dated, the start date for the contract line, a price list for the line, and general ledger defaults. You can enter contract lines manually, or as I mentioned, you can have it from the install base, the sales order, or the quote. When a call exists that references a contract, the system restricts any changes to that line. You can delete a line on a contract except when it's referenced by a call or whether it's been invoiced. The net price in the contract is determined by several factors, including the amount type, P for a specified price, D for discount, M for markup. Extended price for an item is calculated by multiplying the item quantity by the net price per unit by the number of periods of coverage. That's always confusing. Be sure you uh, understand that calculation. 11.5.13.1 contract preventive maintenance deals with scheduled inspections, work order generation, spare parts management, documentation cost tracking. When you have contracts in the contract, you get a detailed pop-up that allows you to specify contract visits, days between PMs, this is critical, recommended visits, and the number of visits. 11.5.13.1 also lets you define additional contract charges. If required, additional charges can be applied to the value of the entire contract or at the line level which can be either fixed or percentage. In some businesses, an organization may provide a level of coverage to end user that is for all products of a certain type. Or even in even more general case, coverage can be provided to an end user regardless of product they're using. You can manage these through business blanket contracts. 
as we covered in the West Coast Yuji Group in October, like I say, just a couple of weeks ago, we find three types of service price lists, contracts, repair, and expense, and three different amounts, either discount, markup, or a specific price. You can set up repair price lists for labor, part expenses, or a monthly price of contract items. You really want to continue the maintenance charges on contracts. Automating and streamlining a service contract renewal process maximizes after sales revenue and maintains continued service coverage. QED can automatically generate renewal uh, notices. You can configure renewal terms individually. You can adjust prices. You can track renewal history. You can report and it integrates with the CRM field service and project. The only restriction is contracts cannot be renewed to the same serial number. There are two procedures for renewing contracts. First, you could create a brand new quote, or you can go through uh, the contract renewal process report of 11 5 13 10 based on date ranges and other selection criteria to form that uh, update. It takes a lot of practice. You need to uh, test it. The 11.5.13.8 renewal single, single contract, you always have to have a start and end date. This is critical to contracts and must be exact. To remain in effect, a contract must be renewed automatic and streaming uh, of the renewal process helps you maximize that revenue. You can do it several ways, either through uh, contract maintenance or, like I said, the 11 513.8. For contracts with auto renew set to yes, you use that 11 513.10 to renew it. You can copy contracts, you can copy quotes to contracts, you can copy uh, contracts to quotes. There's uh, lots of different ways to utilize contracts in the system, either through 11.5.13.6, copy contract to contract, or 11.5.13.8, renewal of a single contract. Depending on your legal requirements, QAD offers several methods for printing contracts, or you could use our own 32 print and LBOX. Once you've mastered the functionality of contract maintenance, you can consider implementation of contract quote functionality. Contract quote functionality provides templates and standardized formats to ensure quotes are created quickly and accurately. It allows you to have a, a version control. It has all the interfaces to financial and uh, operations. You can uh, utilize this function to help improve the efficiency and enhance customer service while making uh, data-driven decisions in your system. Probably the most important aspect of contracts is receiving money for your contract or contract billing. Contract billing is integrated into the standard invoice processing existing in QED. However, there are a couple of unique aspects of billing process for contracts as they are somewhat more complex than the typical pending invoice maintenance. There are some questions you need to answer. How often do you want to bill? Do you want to bill in advance or in arrears? Who usually receives the invoice? What kind of information do you want to appear on the contract? These questions are going to help you set up your contract administration. The first important thing is that you want to uh, consider how often you're going to bill. This is defined by 11.5.18.1, billing cycle code maintenance. Some will be billed monthly, some quarterly, some annually. Three may do. Uh, you may require more. Remember, contracts, the quantity to bill is equal to the number of months because months are uh, the contract unit of time. With the 11.5.18.13 billing release to invoice, a sales order, which serves as a pending invoice for selected contracts with liner ready to bill. You then use 
13 for print and post to take that into the normal sales and invoice process. To effectively use 11.5.13a, you must be aware of the entire structure of data for all your open contracts before you can execute this menu. I once consulted with a company in Texas that had uh, made oil fuel equipment. These pumps were the size of a house and had thousands of parts. The entire revenue structure of the organization was based on how they were loaded in 11.5.13.1 and how they were processed in 11.5.18.13. Billing dates, contract due dates, billing cycles, last date built, last date bill. These all play an important part in the billing process. Remember, this billing released to invoice did not generate any GL transactions. That's done through your 713.4 or through uh, revenue recognition. The effects of releasing an invoice indicates in the contract that it has been billed. All contracts lines have been fully billed for a contract in, uh, header is updated to the next coverage chart. You must run billing release to invoice at least once during each contract billing cycle or month to update the coverage and last build dates. Only completed build contracts can be renewed or deleted or archived. You must keep dates accurate and current. We use the 713.4 invoice print and post to take it through the uh, normal invoice standard QA process. And with billing, you're always gonna have issues with corrections. Just remember, you cannot directly maintain invoices created with billing release invoices with either sales order, or service program. If the invoice is incorrect, the contract is incorrect and must be re-invoiced. There's two uh, ways you can do that. If the invoice has not been printed or posted, you can use billing release maintenance. Or if the invoice has already been posted, you can use billing date correction. The billing reversal is used to remove mistaken billing amounts from unposted contracts. If the billing amounts are reserved, the invoice is removed from the system. This needs real skill and experience is needed for this process. Revenue recognition in QAD refers to the ac uh, process of accurately accounting for revenue earned in sales of goods and services, especially too true with contracts. This process is essential for business to actually report to the financial community to comply with gap accounting standards. Revenue recognition encompasses various functions such as timing, compliance, accounting standards. It has multi-currency support and is integrated with other modules handling deferred and accrued accounting. We use the 11.5.18.21 revenue recognition to generate those GL transaction updating accrued and deferred revenue accounts based on current billing amounts selected for customers and contracts. Because the revenue, reven, uh, revenue generated by the contract is more complex than that of just simple sales, it necessarily requires much stricter tracking and handling components and uh, contracts. QD has many reports that help augment this activity, such as contract cash flow reports, contract deferred income, deferred and accrual revenue reports. It's, a, uh, it's an interesting process to uh, execute. As with all functions in ERP, uh, there are administrative functions from contract delete to changing deferred uh, and accrued counts to revenue delete and archive. Uh, these are fairly complicated and should be studied, tested, and validated before you uh, do it. Maintaining contracts in QAD has always been time consuming and challenging, requiring a deep understanding of the contract process, financial flow, 
with lots of manual data entry. As a result, a lot of customers maintain their data in spreadsheets. This is not a good practice. With the actual use of QAD, you can put the information inside QAD. And with the use of 32 soft loaders, you can do this safe, fast, easily without errors. I'll show you a couple of approaches we've taken on this. The first we can refer to as a single record. We basically programmed this so that the primary collection, uh, uh, selection criteria are contract, customer, end user, and billing. We have a secondary set of criteria that allows for more refinement of selections and elephants for update into QAD and a number of action items, downloading the current contract, uh, inquiring on the current contract, validating data, and then a multi-record approach, which is developed for organizations who are more end user or install base centric. As with all uh, standard 32 soft data loaders, you gotta go through the setup process. And then the primary selection for multi-records includes customer and user and or supplier. Action buttons, again, allow for the input and download of data directly into QED. The level of comprehension required for action buses is equivalent to that required for manually entering and editing contracts. Lots of training, walk me. The primary benefit is it condenses everything into a single spreadsheet that presents all the information in one place. As you can see, the outputting is extensive and this is very uh, helpful. Contracts in QAD store and manage information about legal commitments, such as names, addresses, emails, cost, pricing, schedule. The need to boost revenue potential and model such changes in QAD is becoming a constant challenge and test for the business as it moves at an ever increasing speed. Contracts are the best ways to increase revenue and improve business relationships with your customers who purchase your product. Bar none, contracts have a high revenue payback. So what do we cover today? Well, we've talked about the history, we've talked about product line sites, we look at an overview, we've talked about control files, contracts, revenue grant edition, the contract process in QAD and field servers is extensive and very valuable. QAD has a lot of other 32 soft loaders, uh, GL analyzer, uh, transactions, the contract loaders, customer price lists that can assist in the functionality of contract in your service and support. Since it is such a complex and uh, detailed process, you really need to improve your business acumen. You can do that by either visiting the QED forums, the West Coast User Group, Midwest and S uh, Southeast User Group have excellent discussion and resource boards. Uh, we just had the MUG and WUG all uh, conferences for 2023. The West Coast User Group was the largest attendance we've had ever. It was a great meeting down in Oceanside. Uh, you can use the QED knowledge base. There's the QAD document library, everything you ever wanted to know, or like I say, the AI tools in the internet are becoming more and more uh, valuable. There's also the QAD Learning Center if you want to learn anything about QAD functionality. As I mentioned, we put a uh, website or a URL list out on the website. You just click, take you directly to uh, lots of information about how to use contracts. We hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of QAD's extensive QAD functionality and how one might use that process and a couple of 32 soft loaders to help increase your company's revenue. Is that important? Yeah, I think so. Your ability to control contracts provides the required data and is critical for your success in today's electronic artificial intelligence 
environment. Please contact myself, Denise, Nancy, Alex, if you think of any questions regarding contract uh, administration. And so I thank you very much. And Denise, back to you. Wow, Don, fantastic. As yes. always, lots of great information from you. I'm very much appreciated. We will move right into the Q&A. So again, let's go ahead and move along. We, we know everybody gets busy at year end, so we do not host the December webinar, but we will be right back at it again in January with Conquer the Distribution Devil. And then in February, we have the nuts and bolts of MRP. Um, we are still finalizing some presentation details, but here's a peek at what we have planned for the spring. In March, John will continue on from the nuts and bolts of MRP to show us the ripple effect everyday QAD changes have on, Q on MRP. And then in April, the 32Soft team will attend the Midwest User Group Spring Conference. That is all I have on upcoming events. So back to today and managing contracts in QAD. Good contracts make good relationships. Effective contract management ensures they endure. John, did you have anything else for today before we close out? I, I just, I can't, I can't say it enough. Uh, you know, making product and buying product and selling it is just great. But contract revenue is a gold mine. There are so many organizations out there that don't do warranties and contracts, and they could be making a whole lot more money. So this is this is one of the modules in QAD that is almost an instantaneous payback. So I would recommend anybody that doesn't do contracts start. It's uh, it's a money maker. Excellent point. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Don, also for your time taken to prepare and share with us all of your expertise. Always thank much you, appreciated. And as always, thank you all for taking time out to join us today live. We wish you and yours a wonderful holiday season. And we look forward yeah. to spending time with you again in the new year. So from all of us at 32Soft, have a great day, everybody. Thanks again, Don. Bye-bye.